All right, so for my company, I did Dollar General. So just a quick outline, we're gonna start with the investment thesis, just some key statistics, uh, the industry outlook, how uh, the industry is performing as a whole and future projections, the company, company overview, just some uh, why I think the company is profitable, and lastly, the valuation. <clears throat> so just some key statistics. Uh, the price as of doing this was 208.75. The 52 week high was 224.82, and the 52 week low was 125. Uh, the dividend yield is 0.64%. The market cap is 54 billion, and the enterprise value is 64 billion. Uh, so the price now is kind of it's near the higher side of the 52 week high. So Dollar General, uh, the ticker goes under the ticker G DG. Uh, it's the leader in general discounts merchandise stores. Uh, target targets low and fixed income shoppers. Uh, most of the items are very cheaply priced, but the typically the most you'll see is ten dollars uh, for a higher price. And the two main types of products offered are consumable and non-consumable. Uh, my recommendation is obviously a buy. Uh, current price while doing the DCF was 213.33 and my target price is 231 based off of uh, discounted cash flow analysis. So some of the catalysts are expansion of real estate, which is their key strategy, uh, a new business opportunity and addition of online shopping and self-checkout, which I'll talk about throughout the presentation. And the risks are pretty, pretty standard for just any company in general. Uh, they do face intense competition and usually they can be like quite interchangeable with like different dollar dollar stores uh, for products, but you won't typically see uh, a lot of companies coming into the industry and stealing market share like you could in a technology uh, in the technology industry just because it's pretty uh, customary what they sell and how they're run. Uh, with strategic plan failure like their key strategy of expansion of real estate. Um, this is just pretty pretty standard with most companies. If their strategic plans fail, then they won't do good. And they had unfavorable economic factors on their 10K as a risk. But as we can see, uh, Dollar General has actually outperformed the market through uh, economic uncertainty. So we're just gonna get into the industry outlook. So they operate in the consumer staple sector and the more specifically the dollar store sub industry <clears throat> and we saw throughout the industry that there was a return to value shopping and people wanted to cut costs wherever they could during uh, economic weakness and uncertainty through the pandemic and this served as a tailwind for discount and dollar stores you know you can see this with 25.23 uh, percent growth sales growth since march uh, when the market crashed. Uh, so mass merchants like Walmart, Target, and Dollar General, they're very large in scale, and they're set up all across the country to cons uh, provide consumers with deals. And something I actually found interesting was that <clears throat> there's a Dollar General within 5% or 5 miles of 75% of Americans. And this is just adds to that convenience factor of being there. Uh, just set up to provide deals to anyone and everyone. And I actually looked it up on my phone and there were actually three or four within five miles of me. And I knew there were at least two. So it was just really interesting. Um, so dollar stores actually in general have the potential to expand upon private label products. Currently Dollar General offers Clorox, Nestle, Pepsi, among others. And they, they have dollar stores, um, have the lowest percentage of private, private label products typically because they're more expensive, but they definitely have the opportunity to expand upon that and become more, more desirable to a broader base of customers. <clears throat> and then like economic weakness, <clears throat> sorry, like economic weakness, high unemployment rates uh, can contribute to sales growth with uh, PUA, the pandemic uh, unemployment assistance and economic stimulus checks. It has uh, helped Dollar General and the industry as a whole see increase in sales.
So a little bit more about the company. Uh, they're strategically located in small towns that don't support giant discount stores such as Walmart. So they're, they're generally not competing too much with Walmart stores. They're more small town America. And as for Amazon, which is a huge player in, in uh, shopping and retail, e-commerce, typically the lower fixed income customers aren't, you know, Amazon Prime subscribers or don't like to pay for shipping. They're mostly consumable items, so they're not really competing with that aspect. Like I said, the two main types are consumable, which is um, more food, paper, cleaning products, and non-consumable, which is broke down into three segments, uh, which I'll talk about later. Dollar General offers products such as Clorox, Procter & Gamble, Hanes, Nestle, and Pepsi. And like I said, they definitely have the opportunity to expand upon that. <clears throat> and their main competitors are Dollar Tree, uh, which actually took over Family Dollar. So that's combined, uh, Five Below, and Target. Nick, I have a question. If they're generally uh, not in areas where there's a Walmart, how come they're in areas where there's a Target if Target and Walmart generally operate in the same area? Because that's one of Target's main um, strategies. If there's a Walmart, they make sure they put a Target in the same area. Because if you ever go somewhere, you see a Walmart, you'll see a Target across the street. That's their strategy. So why is that? If you can't, if they're in located small towns that don't support giant discount stores like Walmart, why is a competitor Target and not Walmart? Well, I, I use Target as a competitor just because um, of the size of the company and they're just in the general retail industry. Oh, and based like on market cap. Based on market cap, yeah. Okay, all right, because thank you. the dollar stores were like significantly smaller in market cap. So it was just kind of like a financial comparison. Okay, all right, great, thank you. <clears throat> so as for business overview, they run an effective and low-risk business model. So this is one of their catalysts, which is the expansion of real estate. They expand about a thousand, I believe, uh, stores within the country. Uh, when I wrote this, there were, or at, like in the beginning of 2020, there were tw uh, 16,360 stores operating in 45 different states, mainly in the South and the East. But two weeks ago, they opened their 17,000th 17, 17, store in uh, Fountain, Colorado. And um, so yeah, they're definitely, is, their main uh, strategy is expansion. And you might be thinking to yourself, like how do they stay profitable? How, how like do they keep meeting the sales thresholds? But a dollar general I saw in the Motley Fool, a new dollar general is able to pay itself off within two years of opening, which I found very interesting. So they are kind of highly de uh, debted, which is kind of uh, customary in this industry, the dollar store industry, but they're able to pay themselves off and um, expand and meet sales thresholds. Uh, so if you look on the left in purple, uh, you could see they, they're all the general merchandise stores within the country. You could kind of see a line split down the middle of the country with most of them dominating the East. And they have potential to, um, they've located 9,000 potential new locations, uh, prob most likely in the Northwest region which is kind of underdeveloped. So that's uh, just a whole new uh, revenue generator because 20.6% of their stores right now are in Texas, Georgia, and Florida, just those three uh, states. And as for distribution, uh, they in 2018, they created DG Fresh, which is uh, an attempt to for self-distribution of perishable and fresh foods, with their, which they are starting to offer in most stores, and also Fast Track, which is an attempt to uh, improve self-checkout and online services, which have been underdeveloped in dollar stores. Typically, you they're more brick and mortar. You go into the dollar store and you get, get what you need, but through online shopping and picking up in store, um, it's brought in more revenue. Also, the DG Go app allows customers to scan items for self-checkout, which is making it more 
more efficient and it also has proved in to bring more sales. <clears throat> so who's running this company? Who's the team behind all their strategic initiatives? The CEO is Todd Vesos. He's served as CEO since 2015 and has held multiple different positions, specifically in operations within Dollar General. And he's leading the initiative of tapping into higher income markets through new stores uh, called Pop Shelf, which I'll talk about. The COO is Jeff Owen. He has 21 years of experience within Dollar General. He actually started as a store manager and has made his way up through various uh, operations roles. Bezos has extreme confidence in, in him to drive short and long-term focus and strategy. And there's not many more that know about operations more than him from floor level to corporate strategy. And then John Garrett is the CFO and executive VP. He joined the team in 2014 as senior VP and quickly impressed through leadership and uh, demonstrating corporate strategy. Uh, before Dollar General, he served as the vice president of finance for KFC with Young Brands. So peer group analysis, a little bit about the peer group. Uh, so there's Dollar Tree and Five Below, which are dollar stores. And I threw in Target because they're larger in market cap and just as a, a benchmark kind of just compare to. So their Target's market cap is 81 billion. Like I said before, do, uh, Dollar General's is 54 billion. The closest competitor in terms of market cap within the dollar store industry is Dollar Tree or at around 22 billion. And then five below is at seven billion, so extremely uh, lower in market cap. <clears throat> in terms of valuation, uh, Dollar General has a PE ratio of 23.67 and an enterprise EBITDA uh, ratio of 12.94. And these are both below uh, the industry median. Both Target and Dollar Tree are in a similar boat, but uh, Five Below actually has a higher PE at around like 76, but that's just driven by their re extreme revenue growth over the past year, which was around 18%. If you look to the uh, uh, third one at the top, Dollar General's revenue growth was 8.31%, and that's higher than both Dollar Tree and Target at 3.45 and 3.66. Uh, so in terms of liquidity, Dollar General has a slightly above average current ratio of 1.4. So it's obviously, it's nice to see that they can pay off uh, short-term debts and liabilities uh, better than their competitors. And it can be said that both Dollar General and Target manage their debt better as they're able to pay out dividends while Dollar Tree and Five Below do not. Although their dividend yield at 0.64 is pretty low, compared to Target 2, which is 1.72%. It is nice to see a dollar, a dollar store that is comfortable enough to pay out dividends. Uh, for legislation and regulation, this doesn't seem to be a big problem within the industry. Uh, Target leads peers with cases uh, as with 792 cases. This is kind of an outlier. Uh, they're just a bigger company, comes with bigger cases, but even Dollar Tree has more cases than Dollar General. Uh, in terms of regulation, there's not too much uh, going on within the industry. The latest regulation I found was just local governments requiring Dollar General to have at least 500, 500 square feet of fresh produce uh, just to promote more healthy lifestyle among lower income shoppers. And lastly, uh, revenue breakdown by segment. Consumable, which I said is like the food, uh, paper, cleaning products. They make up 78% of their revenue at about 21 billion. Um, so this means that non-consumables, including seasonal at about 12%, and then home products and apparel, both at around 4%, make up 22% of revenue. And these consumable products that they're selling are highly like low margin products. So they're getting them, they're not selling them for much more than they're getting them. And there's definitely a lot of potential to expand upon the sales of these seasonal, like, um, you know, like the Halloween products and toys, then the home products, uh, just kitchen appliances and 
uh, regular home products and then apparel, which is like shirts, uh, clothing, hats, anything that. So I'll talk about that within the valuation section and the undervaluation. Uh, there's a future growth vector within their new business opportunity called Pop Shelf. So Pop Shelf is Dollar General's attempt at creating a whole new brand and uh, targeting a higher income target base. Um, <clears throat> so this store, I'll, I'll read off what it said on their website. It offers fun shopping experiences for on-trend seasonal and home decor, health and beauty must-haves, home cleaning supplies, party goods, and other entertaining products. So I, I don't have pictures of the inside of the store, but it definitely has a clean, you know, trendy look to it. It kind of gives off more of a, a higher quality vibe. And it kind of has like the pop shelf, top shelf. It just alludes to uh, like a higher um, quality of products. And they're starting to open up in Tennessee where Dollar General is based out of. And they have uh, proved through their expansion of real estate like strategy that they can um, open facilities quickly. And if you assume the same revenue growth rate of Dollar General, which is around 7% yearly, uh, Pop Shelf could generate 1.3 billion by 2025. And also since these are low, uh, more non-consumable items that they're selling, there is a low threat of cannibalization of Dollar General sales. <clears throat> and this could increase uh, their margins as well as these are higher margin products. And also for undervaluation, uh, there is the discounted cash flow analysis with the uh, exit multiple of 10 times EBITDA and the, their WAC of 5.1%. The target price uh, for Dollar General that I came up with is 231, putting the future value of the stock at a 8.2%, 8.28% premium. And I think this, uh, that pop shelf could definitely drive the price, the future price up. Um, they've seen consistent revenue growth over the past five years, uh, and they're continued to expect it to grow. The 2021 estimates is uh, at around 19.5%, but this is just demonstrated through the great growth that they saw during the pandemic. And I think after, uh, after 2021 and 2022, we'll definitely see that uh, consistent revenue growth rate of around that uh, seven to nine percent sweet spot that they had pre-pandemic. Uh, so net income also has increased at an average annual percentage rate of 11.11 percent .11 since 2017. So they've definitely been able to stay increase net income yearly and stay uh, remain profitable. Also, if you look on the right, uh, Dollar General has beat earnings per share estimates over the past six quarters. Um, so definitely with their strong history of beating earnings per share and uh, increasing net income, increasing revenue, uh, they're definitely proving to be profitable and undervalued, in my opinion. Uh, for revenue, Dollar General has had an average revenue growth rate of 7.97% annually since 2014. If you look on the top graph to the left, you could see kind of how it, it really has steadily risen until this year about when they've seen sales definitely increase. Um, and this increased revenue has allowed them for more money and free cash flow and more money to fund different projects. And it definitely helps with their key strategies. And they have beat revenue estimates nine out of the last 10 quarters. And the last time they didn't beat expectations was quarter one of 2019. Uh, in terms of earning per share, their current EPS is 9.20. Uh, their earnings per share has almost tripled since 2015. It has an average growth rate of 14% year over year since 2015. And their earnings uh, before interest and taxes has also uh, increased 9% annually since 2014 and has a projected uh, five-year growth rate of 17.54%. 17, 17 and this is just showing that they can continue to you know, make profit for their investors. 
And just to kind of recap and go over the main points, uh, they look undervalued through different financial and discounted cash flow analysis. Uh, so that it looks to be better than average in their industry. Their new business venture, Pop Shelf, uh, could, could make um, up to 1.3 billion by 2025 and can definitely serve as a great source of revenue throughout the future. And if uh, through their key strategy of opening new stores, they're able to continue to expand and continue to meet sales thresholds, increase revenue, and they're able to pay themselves off within two years, the new stores. Uh, they're a leader within the industry and there's not much cannibalization from other uh, stores. And if their new business adventure takes off, there shouldn't be too much cannibalization from that. And they have a strong business model, strong management team, and have proven to um, outperform the market and they tend to perform well during good and bad economic times. So that's about it. And thank you. Do you have any questions? Great. Thank you, Nick. Uh, what sector are they in? <clears throat> the consumer staples. And what else do we have in that area in Thunder Fund that you think this would help the fund out? So that on, in that sector, it's just Walmart. Just Walmart. Okay. Yeah. And, you so we don't, and we don't compete directly with Walmart. So we're going after a different area. Yeah. Okay. All right. Does anyone have any questions? No. All right. We'll definitely keep this under advisement when we have this discussion next Monday to look how to make Thunder Fund stronger than it already is because we are in positive territory.